Portland startup JAMA Software got acquired this week for $1.2 billion. I'm going to do a deep dive where they came from, what they did, where the value was, but also think about things like where does this exit fall in terms of other exits in the Portland startup community. As I started thinking about this situation and all the history I've had in tracking JAMA and watching their journey, I realized that if I tried to force this into the weekend wrap up, you know, the recap of what happened this week, JAMA would just wind up overwhelming the whole thing. So what I decided to do instead is give you a special treat. So let's go on a little deep dive into JAMA software and understand what this $1.2 billion acquisition really means in the context of Portland startups. I'll work to answer three specific questions for you. One, is this the biggest exit ever for a software startup in Portland? Two, wait a second, didn't JAMA already exit? And three, how ridiculous were the multiples on the return for Oregon Venture Fund? JAMA originally started in 2007, but they were doing product requirements management which basically meant for really, really complex products, you have a lot of pieces and parts and moving things that you need to keep track of and make sure you assemble in the right way and, and all that kind of stuff. And I started tracking their journey very, very early. So I feel lucky to have been present and around and paying attention to practically their entire journey. Now, I have to give a shout out to Angela Jackson, who reminded all of us that JAMA like Jive Software, was an early resident in the Portland State Business Accelerator. So that's an interesting trivial fact you can use at your next Portland cocktail party. What two Portland software startups beginning with J were both early residents in the Portland State Business Accelerator? It's Jive Software and JAMA Software. There you go. JAMA was among the most well-known software startups in Portland at a time when people were really trying to prove that you could build sizable companies here. Not only to prove that they could build super interesting and scalable companies here in Portland, but to prove they could also raise significant venture capital, which makes JAMA especially unique because JAMA was bootstrapped for the longest time. JAMA actually took its first investment only because it happened to win the Ben Venture Conference and wound up taking $110,000 in equity investment. But they would be a company for a full six years before they took their first institutional venture capital in a $13 million round. All told, they wound up raising around $233 million in venture capital. And now there's been a return. So is this the biggest exit ever for a Portland software startup? It's a tie. It ties the record with Viewpoint Software, which also exited for $1.2 billion in 2018. But where is this exit in the context of other Portland exits? In 2016, Berkshire Hathaway acquired Precision Cast Parts for $37 billion. That same year, FEI, the Electron Microscope, folks were acquired for 4.2 billion. Pacific Foods, the ones who made the soups and the broths and that kind of thing, were acquired by Campbell's for 700 million dollars. But in terms of software companies and software startups in Portland, where does this sort of exit fall? Obviously at the top, but here are a few other exits that have happened in town so that you have a comparison for the scope of this exit. Elemental, which was seen as one of the most significant exits in the Portland startup community, was acquired by Amazon for almost $300 million. Jive Software went public, raising $161 million in its IPO. Simple was acquired by BBVA for $117 million. So that gives you a little bit of context for what the JAMA exit looks like. But wait a minute, didn't JAMA already exit? Sort of? Kind of, sort of. They took a $200 million round that allowed some investors and the co-founders to have a liquidity event. So they got money out of the company during that round. But some investors, like Oregon Venture Fund and Madrona, decided to retain a stake in the company. So they took some of the money in the round, but they also said, we still want to hold on to some of the stock and some of the equity in the company and see where that goes. Was it smart for Oregon Venture Fund? 
to hang on to that stake? I think so, because the multiple they achieved on that investment was borderline ridiculous. Eric Rosenfeld, the founder of Oregon Venture Fund, which started off as Oregon Angel Fund, let the Portland Business Journal know that by holding on to that portion of JAMA and going through this acquisition, they received upwards of a 60x return on their stake, 60 times what they invested. What does that mean exactly? Well, I don't know what the actual numbers were. I don't know how much Oregon Venture Fund originally put in, but I do know that if they put in something like $250,000 for that stake, that would be the equivalent of getting $15 million back. So that seems like a pretty wise investment. Long story short, $1.2 billion exit is to be lauded. It's hard to say what the actual returns were on that, but the number is impressive. It's especially important to the Portland startup community getting to see one of their own companies have an exit of this size. And finally, it's simply amazing to see a company that bootstrapped for so long achieve this sort of acquisition. So that's the JAMA story. If you'd like more of these deep dives into Portland startups, just let me know. I've got like 16 years of content to dig through to provide these in-depth looks at these companies and to provide the context for how meaningful these kind of situations are. Thanks for hanging out with me while I took this trip down memory lane with JAMA Software. Until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work.